Hey everyone, Cody here, and hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I had to get a new phone because the old one would just not hold the charge, and if I was recording, sometimes it would shut off. The, it was like four years old, so the battery would just not hold up at all. So I got a new phone. The other issue with that, and like the, the phone is nicer and newer and everything, so that's great, but it doesn't have like a, a port for headphones. <laughs> so I don't have an adapter, so I'm going to have to film it without my microphone. So I'm hoping that you guys can hear me. I'll just try to speak louder so that you guys can hopefully hear me. All right, I've already, paint, I've already mixed my paints, so I won't go into mixing them. Uh, today, we're going to do our classic patented lines painting. Um, I don't know if it's classic or patented, but you know, uh, just kind of a technique that I've developed over time. So we're gonna be doing a line painting, but instead of going the long ways, we're actually gonna go short ways. So we're going to make our lines um, vertical as opposed to horizontal. Also, we're going to be, I'm gonna be trying it with a paintbrush, a regular paintbrush. I have not done uh, one of these types of paintings with a regular paintbrush, so I don't know if it's gonna work. If it does not, I have my classic edge painters here. So, you know, we can kind of just kind of see what happens. So if it works, uh, we'll use the paintbrush. If not, we'll use the edge painters. So we'll run over the colors real quick and then we'll kind of get into the painting. White classic, uh, turquoise, dark blue, uh, purple, plum, gold, and black. And I realized in my last video that I had used just so many different colors. Um, the painting's okay. I actually don't hate it, but I think I used too many colors. This today, what I wanted to do was kind of keep it, uh, the colors kind of uh, not matching per se, but in, in a similar range. So I did blue and purple because they have that overlap. Um, also, I chose, you know, turquoise and this dark blue to kind of offset, and then I used purple and plum because they're similar, but they'll, they'll create an offset as well. And then of course, gold, black and white, because I just love that color scheme so much. So without any further talking, let's go ahead and get started. So I want to do white kind of last. Actually, since I already have them set up this way, maybe I'll just use them from left to right. Might make it easier. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and start with white. And uh, as always, well, not always, always, but uh, today we're using our gloss enamel paints. So I need to move these out of here. I get a lot of people asking me where you get them uh, from, hard, from hardware stores or you can get them from uh, a paint store. All right, so we're gonna make our lines here. Now, one thing I noticed that I've been doing is kind of making a pattern where I evenly space the colors. Um, so I'm gonna try to not do that today. I'm gonna try to create some some lines that are thicker than others but i'm also going to try to not necessarily make it even even though it looks like i, I kind of am so i don't i don't have any at the very end over there so i'm going to put a little stripe here and then just to fill in this one just put a little bit more paint to fill that in all right so i think that's probably pretty good just reinforce those lines a little bit and leave that there so then we'll move on to turquoise I really like turquoise. I didn't used to like turquoise when, you know, before until I started painting. And it's, it's, it's funny how after I started painting, I kind of developed a, an appreciation for colors that I didn't really care about before. Um, like yellow, like I almost never used yellow, didn't really care for it. Uh, but after I started using yellow more, I kind of grew an appreciation for yellow. And now, it's not my favorite color, but you know, I, I have an appreciation for it. So it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, how you can, uh, I think it's interesting how your preferences can change over time based on what you're doing in your life. So it's kind of like foods, you know, you, you may not like a food when you're growing up and then when you become an adult, you start eating it all the time and you're kind of wondering why you didn't like it as a kid or you know what what changed to make you like it but it's good because then it kind of you know kind of broadens your horizon i guess oh we've got a this one's kind of thick so i'm gonna go ahead and add some water i don't know if you can see that or not add a little bit of water to it to kind of break it up 
it's been sitting out here for a little while, so you can just <clears throat> drying out. So give it a good stir. And break that. Uh, break it up a little bit. Yeah, that is helping. Perfect. I think we're good. So going back to the conversation, um, yeah, when I was a kid, like I didn't like avocados. Um, my mom would eat them all the time and I just couldn't understand the appeal of avocados. I was like, well, these are kind of gross um, and flavorless. And I just didn't get it. You know, they weren't sweet, they weren't spicy. They're just kind of like, it's almost like they just exist. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't a fan of avocados and then, um, you know, I became an adult and I like avocados now, you know, I, I especially like guacamole. So I like chips and salsa and chips and guacamole. Uh, I think, uh, Chipotle isn't my favorite restaurant, but I, their chips and guac are pretty good. Um, but yeah, I, you know, but as a, again, as a kid, I just, I didn't like them and I don't know why, you know, I don't know why what changed to be honest with you. I don't know why all of a sudden I just like them as an adult. I just do. And that's kind of, I guess that's just how life goes, you know? It's sometimes I think that our preferences change even without us noticing. Like, we don't know why it changed. We can't, we don't have like a definitive, uh, like day and time that we can point back to and say, oh yeah, well, change this day. <clears throat> nah, I don't think it's like that. <laughs> I think it just happens and we don't really recognize it. So we don't know why it changed or what changed it. It just did. Oh, I love the gold because I love watching it like fold on itself. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's like folding on itself. Ah, that's my favorite. Gold is really fun to work with, um, especially with this metallic um, like paint. What I like about it is that it, it doesn't, it doesn't follow the rules. Um, yeah, but essentially that is what I'm trying to say. Like it, it doesn't follow the rules because anytime I use the gold, it, it kind of pushes out the other colors. And it's almost like a bully, right? It's kind of rude. Like it's like, get out my way because I'm gold. But uh, what I like about it is that it, it really comes through on the paintings. So like, I think it might be just because it's not necessarily gloss enamel, so it doesn't, it's not as like sticky as gloss enamel. Um, I think it also has to do with the fact that like, it's one, a different type of paint. So the rest of these are gloss enamel. I use a, a paint store called Dunn Edwards here in the Southwest. Um, but the, uh, the PPG Metallics, which is the gold, um, which you can get at like Home Depot, the metallics isn't gloss enamel. So I guess, you know, not all of my paints are gloss enamel. Now that I'm saying that, I, uh, that one in particular is not. <clears throat> so with the metallic, you know, you can, it just, it works a little bit differently. So it's pretty much all the paintings that I use black, or I mean the gold for, it's like the gold has its own properties. So it just, it just looks and acts differently because it's not the same type of paint. So, all right, so we've got some gaps. I need to hurry up and fill those gaps in before the paint sets. It's already starting to dry, I can see it. Um, so I'm gonna try to get these uh, little gaps filled in. I think we're good there, good there, good there. And good there. And then I think we're good. I think that's enough paint. So we're going to go ahead and start. Uh, we'll start on the left and then kind of work our way right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to move these. I got some paint woods here. What we're going to do, let me just make sure it's still recording. All right. We're going to just gently pull the paintbrush through all the paint. Actually, I'm pretty sure that that's not going to be enough paint right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay some purple in there just to fill in the gap. We just want to get enough paint to get the painting started. So, all right, so here we go. We're just going to line, we're just going to pull this paintbrush through the paint. A nice even stroke. 
Okay. So it actually looks successful. It's actually successful. I need to move some of these, but I'm going to, I have to go back through it because I have to get the edges and I want to make sure that we get the whole thing. So, all right, I'm pushing not super hard, but a decent pressure to make sure that it pulls those colors through. If I don't push hard enough, then it won't create the lines, but if I push too hard, then it pushes out the paint and it's really thin. So it's kind of a balance here. And I think we've got it. All right, I'm excited about this. So then we're gonna pull this through the next section here. So this is an issue. It, there's part of it where it didn't get covered. So I'm going to go over part of it. Make sure I get that. Okay, this is uh, this has turned out pretty good. I'm going to go over a little bit of the next section. No, there's something in there, a chip of paint. All right, so it messed it up. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna wipe this off. Okay, so we're gonna have to go over that section again. is a mess right there. There we go. So I think the problem that's happening now is that there's too much paint on the paintbrush. So I'm actually going to wipe it off right there. Because um, you can see that we're starting to lose kind of the, uh, the definition. So I'm going to go over this one real quick. Just lightly pull the brush through. There we go. All right. Now it's starting to give us some of that definition back. Okay, so I think, all right, so it looks like it's leaning a little bit to the side, so I'm going to try to straighten it out here. There we go. Okay, we got a lot of paint, so I'm gonna put that there and pull this through. I need to go over this section again because there was some K 
canvas shot. All right, so we're done. One thing I want to note is the pockets of gold. Okay, so like I said, the gold doesn't like to play by the rules, so it kind of splits off. One thing I don't like is this little bubble here. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and try to smooth it out. I may ruin it, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to smooth it out because it's kind of, it throws off the painting for me. So I'm just gonna, oh, okay. So I'm just going to have to use the side with the paint on it. Because if I don't, then it's going to scrape all that paint off. Okay, perfect. All right. So I want to leave it. I don't want to keep uh, messing with it because I think that it will just make it worse. Just gonna... There we go. All right, so now while I have this paint on here, um, I kind of want to use the paint to paint the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Actually, I'm going to use one of these edge painters. I've actually found that these are, are good for uh, painting the edges. Never even thought about it, but it makes a lot of sense since it's an edge painter. So you can just kind of, you know, use the paint that's there and just run it along the side. And it gets those edges. But I'm going to leave it here. I don't want to move it around too much because I don't want it to, to pool. Um, so I'm going to put this in water. And I will take my gloves off and show you guys the final piece, which I'm actually pretty happy with. Um, I didn't know that the brush would work like that but, you know I got these edge painters thinking that was the only way it was gonna work but uh, no I was wrong all right so there they are there's those defined lines that we like to see I mean I know someone said that you know guard Richter's work had the uh, was digital but I've never again never really seen lines this thin in a painting before so to create them with a brush is uh it's pretty interesting and all i did was just bring paint you know up and down the painting but and then there's the gold of course like i said it doesn't like to follow the rules and then we got colors within colors look at okay in particular look at this line right there do you see that really thin line? Like, that's incredibly thin. You know, I talked about paper thin lines in one of my other videos. I think it's even thinner than paper thin lines. The nice gold. It kind of created like a, a gray over here. With, and then we got the pockets of gold, of course. Which, I really, that's what I'm talking about with the gold. Like, I really like it because it, it separates the colors and it creates these little cells that the other colors don't make. Now the, the gloss and amyl I don't think is meant to do that. So that's fine. But the gold, putting the gold in there, it breaks it up. So it, it kind of gives it a little bit of character and that's what I really like. So uh, that's pretty much it. If you uh, liked it, let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.